am Monster Mike Welch. I'm going to be playing blues for the fine people here at the Harlem Blues Club tonight. Uh, some songs I've written over the years and some, some of my favorite songs that other people have written. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be a blues show. <laughs> didn't play any music and my older sister didn't play music. I had an older cousin who played Beatles songs um, when I was about eight years old and he was 13. So I thought that was the coolest thing I'd ever seen and that's what made me want to play. Um, my father was a huge music fan and he had one of those real 1960s record collections. So the Beatles, which I got into through my cousin, and then the Rolling Stones, he's a huge Dylan fan, everything Eric Clapton played on. Hendrix, um, and then as well as some blues records, and I was the kind of weird kid who would read liner notes of records or want to read interviews by my favorite musicians, and that ended up bringing me back to the blues. Um, and then my dad got enthusiastic about the idea of like going out to record stores with his son and you know buying a bunch of old blues records. So, um, so my dad was a music fan, but I was the only one in my house that played. Take my word, take my hand, take a walk with me sometime. Take my word, take my hand, take a walk with me sometime. I will show you, pretty baby, what I have on my mind. I ain't saying, I'm just saying. I started playing at blues jams when I was about 11 years old and started playing professionally when I was about 13 years old. So there was no way I was going to be able to do any of what I did without older musicians taking me under their wing. Um, there were some really great local uh, blues musicians in the Boston area. Um, a couple of great guitar players, a guy named Matt Woodburn, a guy named Tim Guerin. And then later on when I started to get uh, professional, one of the biggest mentors was a guy named David Maxwell who was a piano player who played with Freddie King in the 70s wow. and played with Jimmy Rogers and Otis Rush and he was James Cotton's piano player for a long time and John Lee Hooker you know I mean he'd, he'd played with everybody and he was one of the people who he got me up to play with Hubert Sumlin and James Cotton and all of these people um, and then uh, also all of the musicians who were in a band called Sugar Ray and the Blue Tones which I ended up joining much later um, but that was like a family growing up and those guys had been doing it since before I was born. I've always written songs. Um, I go through periods where I don't write at all and periods where I'm writing, you know, three songs a day. Um, I like having my own songs to sing. Um, sometimes they're very personal. Um, there, there are a couple on the new record that are incredibly personal to me. Um, whether it's about um, some of the things I've gone through, some of my struggles with mental health. Um, and then there are songs that are straight up fiction or just more fun or because I've come up with a good line and I've come up with a bunch of other lines that rhyme with that and it sounds good. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, I, it, it's... Um, it's always just been part of making music for me. I got a 
kind hearted woman Do anything that's worth for me But these evil hearted women They will not leave me be I love my baby my new album to me feels like the inside of my brain and my heart. It's just, it's the way I feel music. It's the way I, um, it's the way I experience the blues. And there's songs there about, you know, about the struggles I've had with mental health, about some of the loss I've experienced, as well as, you know, um, there's a song about the time when I started dating my wife. My wife and my daughter both sing background vocals on different songs. It's, it really feels, it really feels like a personal thing. Um, and I, I also have some of the greatest musicians in the world playing on it. Um, you know, I, I was talking with Aircon earlier about how great it was to have Jerry Jamont, who's a legendary bass player who played on The Thrill Is Gone by B.B. King and played on Aretha Franklin and King Curtis and you know, all of these great records. Um, and Kid brought him into the studio to play bass for one of the days. And, and uh, you know, it, it, it's just really great to have this record um, and to have had all these people surround me and who had my back. And and uh, I couldn't I couldn't have made this personal statement without them. Doing this for as long as I have, it's made it very clear to me that human beings are all just trying to get from one end of the day to the other. And um, kindness is really important. And uh, if nothing else, it makes everyone's life easier. If, you know, just try to treat everybody with kindness and patience. Um, you know, it's, um, and maybe out of that can come love or maybe out of that can come understanding, but just sort of the basic decency and kindness uh, towards people makes life a lot better and a lot easier. Forgot how to end the song. How about it one more time for the band, everybody? Air Condos to Beer on the bass.